Hey everybody. So uh, I wanted to go over some of the alternatives that exist for Microsoft Office um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, Microsoft is just as evil a corporation as all the rest, but also there are free alternatives and so many people feel like they're stuck on Microsoft and you're, you're really not. Um, there are some alternatives. So I'll talk about the, the three that I typically use and the one that I use most. Um, you know, one of the problems with Office is, uh, of course, it works on Windows and it works well, and there is Office 365. Um, there's Office for Mac, but there's no Office for Linux unless you use 365. Uh, these three that I'm going to show you uh, have a version for all three of those major operating systems. So they're available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. But of course, you know, Microsoft has, you know, a vested interest in getting you to buy it for Windows because, of course, they have Windows as well. So, um, anyways, let's, let's start looking at them and I'll go over some of this stuff as we go. Uh, so, this first one here is LibreOffice and you can go to LibreOffice.org slash download. Uh, you don't actually need the second download in there because it will default to this. And then just click right there for download if you're on Windows 64-bit and there are other versions available there. Um, for Linux you can usually get it from the, the software repositories. Uh, and let me show you what LibreOffice is. So LibreOffice is, um, it, it's actually really old. It was made originally by Sun and then remade a bunch of times and now there's this free open source version plus a version that you can pay for if you want support. But basically, when it opens up, you get these. So there's uh, Writer, Calc, Impress, which is basically uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And then there's Draw, which is similar to Visio. Uh, you can add math formulas. So for math, it might be easier to actually do math formulas for like spreadsheet or for like uh, worksheets for students in here. Um, and then there's a, a database program as well. So like, let me open Writer, and I'll show you. Now this can open up a little bit slower than Office does, than, than regular Word does. Uh, I think it was originally written in Java, where um, Office is written in, in Visual Basic, I think, and so it opens up a bit slower, but you'll get used to that. And if you've got a reasonably fast computer, you won't even notice. But I mean, you can see it uses just typical fonts and everything, and works, you know, just like Microsoft Office would. And um, it, it's got a lot of the same features and everything. One of the things that I think is really nice is how you can do uh, insert, I think it's object, yeah, formula. And then it opens up this, this math feature. So like you can do these um, and then you can, let's see. So you can enter like, do like that. Uh, and put in, you know, math formulas really easily. Uh, obviously, you can get more complex ones in there as well. Um, and then there's, there's these things too. So there's a whole bunch of stuff for math. So uh, I just always thought that was neat. And also, you're not stuck to the sizing here. Um, I forget exactly how to change the size of it, though. But uh, you can change the size of the font, of course, as well, and, and do some other things with it. Uh, but for calculations and stuff, it's, it's really kind of nice. Um, so again, there's, there's also the spreadsheet feature. So like you can open up some, just a regular spreadsheet like in Excel. Notice these are, are different and you'll have to get used to that. That is a change. Um, but I can show you here. The, the default is uh, ODF, Open Document Format but it will save things as Excel. So uh, if you do uh, like 97 to 2003, that's a really common one. Uh, it'll op also open up Excel documents. Um, the present presenta uh, presentation software or impress presentation software will open up PowerPoint documents as well. And of course it's got you know templates and stuff just like, just like PowerPoint does. So it's, it's really similar. One of the other nice things to mention is um, both LibreOffice and the other one that I'm about to show you, WPS, are much smaller. So I think LibreOffice was around uh, 300 megabytes to download and WPS is like 200, 
Whereas to download the full version of the office as discs anyways, it takes up like four gigabytes or something. And you know, uh, office is the one we're all used to and it looks really good. And a lot of Microsoft products are, are wonderful. Um, but I just, I wouldn't pay for them because there's always an alternative that's, that's free basically. So, um, and of course there are a lot of cracked copies that you can get pretty easily, but then you got to deal with like, you know, not being able to update it or activation problems or whatever. And, you know, plus it's, it's illegal. So this is a nice alternative uh, if you don't want to go down that road. The next one is WPS Office. And you can see there's a version for Windows, Mac, Linux. Um, there's also some other things here. And then there are mobile versions. And that's where I first saw it was WPS for Android. And I liked it enough that I tried it on Linux and then eventually, you know, got it for Windows. And there are some downsides, but what you'll notice, so uh, again, there's documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and then there are some PDF tools in here as well, um, like PDF to Word and stuff. Some of the things uh, they want you to sign in for, like create an account and then pay for. So there is a, a, a tier where you have to pay to get extra features. But the bulk of the stuff in here, you don't have to pay for, and it can basically replace Office without paying a cent. And what's nice about it, you can see there are templates too, but what's nice about it is how it looks basically just like Word. I mean, even down to, like, look at these headings and stuff for these different styles. So it, it, it's really similar. Um, it does also use whatever fonts are installed in your system. So, like, if you've got the regular... Um, the regular Windows fonts, it, it will use those, you know, like Arial and stuff. One of the issues with it is that although it will open up regular Microsoft documents like DOC, DOCX, and so on, um, sometimes the fonts get screwed up, and you'll find that same issue with LibreOffice. And I think it has to do with uh, fonts that are like trademarked or copyrighted or patented or something. Um, and but you can usually work around that. So. Uh, you may have to reformat your documents if you've already created created it in .doc. Uh, however, again, this one can still save to .doc, .docx, and so on. And in case you didn't know, uh, .doc, .xls, .ppt, those were the original Microsoft formats. Anything with an X at the end of it is an open source format. So the difference is, if something is saved as DOCX, XLSX, PPTX, being open source um, means that other programs can open it and can modify it without any weird compatibility layers. There may still be issues with, again, like uh, fonts or whatever, but uh, it tends to be more compatible because the, those X files, X files, if you will, those are, uh, it's an open standard. And so there's no, um, like WPS doesn't need to pay Microsoft for the license to use them or anything. But yeah, you can see this is really, really similar. And the reason is WPS is basically a Chinese knockoff. And so you will see some, some Chinese stuff in here. And they more or less just copied it. Um, I don't know how they're able to do that without, you know, lawsuits and stuff, but they did. Um, there is always that question of, you know, security. When you're using things uh, like this, things that were made by by Chinese manufacturers, programming companies, things like that, especially in the uh, in the computer world, because um, well, just recently, this past year, there were questions about um, motherboards and stuff having little chips in them uh, that Chinese manufacturers put in. So there's always a question of security, but if what you're doing isn't like dealing with state secrets or whatever, then it, it probably shouldn't matter to you, you know? Um, let me see here. I'm just double checking to see if I, if I missed anything. Again, this is another, another free one, and you can go to just wps.com slash download. And I think there are actually fixes for the fonts as well. I know for Linux, there's a font pack that you can download uh, if you have issues. But like you see, it's only 146 megabytes. And again, this will cover 98% of the work that basically anyone does. And then finally, the one I like to use most is the Google Office Suite. So <clears throat> 
if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I love Google's products. It integrates with Drive. It saves stuff to Drive. Uh, you can always download things as .docx, xlsx, pptx. It'll convert automatically from their format, from the Google format into typical uh, Microsoft format. Um, and the way that you can collaborate on this is just awesome. Uh, just simply clicking the share button and then adding other people um, allows you to collaborate really easily and in real time. Now there is Office 365 which was Microsoft's attempt to sort of bridge the gap between what Google offered and the, the sharing features and Microsoft Office. The problem is uh, the last time I used it, it was still kind of glitchy. Uh, it was it was kind of laggy and stuff. And um, you still can't do live editing by multiple people if it starts as a .doc or XLS or PPT. You had to download it, modify it, and then re-upload it. Um, with the newer file format, you can you can work on it dynamically. But it also doesn't have all of the features that that Office has. And one of the downsides to the Google Office suite is that, yeah, it doesn't quite have all of the features that uh, Word and, and Excel and PowerPoint have, but it's got enough that it's going to cover you 99.9% .9 of the time. And as a teacher, I've never found a situation where I was not able to use the Google Office alternatives to Microsoft for what I did. Now, there are some advanced features like um, with Excel, for instance, you can actually get into programming in cells where you can um, actually add visual code in, in the back of it. And that's built into Excel, which most people don't even know about. I wouldn't know about it if, uh, if I hadn't gone to engineering school and, and done some of it in there. But again, most people aren't going to use that. I haven't used it in years. So I would really recommend using Google Office instead of those other three. But... Um, if you do need to use one, uh, just bear in mind that there is LibreOffice and there is WPS Office. WPS Office is a really familiar look and feel, so it would be really easy to switch from Microsoft to that. Um, most of the features are free and it, it, it generally works really well. LibreOffice is completely free, uh, but it's not quite as familiar. You'll kind of have to learn how to use it and learn where things are. So it's, it does look a little bit different. Although, if I remember correctly, there's a way to theme it so that it's more like Microsoft Office. Um, yeah, in, in both cases, you're going to have some compatibility issues. Um, and with WPS and LibreOffice, I don't know about WPS as sharing features, but again, I wouldn't trust it because I just personally wouldn't trust it. I don't think LibreOffice has sharing included, uh, but Google Office does, so that's why I would go with that one. Um, so yeah, anyways, you shouldn't, don't don't pay for Microsoft Office products. There's just no reason to. There is Project and Visio and some other things, um, but for instance, if you use Visio a lot, LibreOffice has their draw feature included, which is similar to Visio, uh, draw drawing, <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, and, and there are other alternatives as well that are free. But again, the, the three that people use most often, use 90 plus percent of the time, are um, Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And all three of these alternatives have got you covered. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, that's what I'll use. I still have Microsoft Office because oftentimes other teachers will send me things in Microsoft and the easiest way to deal with it is to just continue to use Microsoft. But going forward, what I've tried to do and tried to get all of my coworkers to do is to use Google Office. It just works better. And the sharing feature is so seamless. Um, you can uh, get, a, a, there's an extension that you can get to allow offline editing as well. So um, that's where if you, if you synchronize your files to your local computer, you can edit it when you're, when you're not online and then when you come back online, it will automatically synchronize. So uh, it just works really well. Yeah. Um, all right. That's about all I got. So if you got questions, leave them below so that I can ignore them. And, um, you know, yeah. Have a great day.